very nice and neat. This one of two. One of two. This is the gear explosion before the storm. One of us. So we He's ultra heavy. <laughs> this is This is gonna be my pack. This is the Palante V4. <laughs> We're here in the Wind River Range in the Green River Valley, about to start the Wind River High Route. Very excited about it. Uh, we got a fun crew for this trip. We've got Bites and Radio, my old original PCT trail family, uh, their buddy Matt, and Armstrong. This is Dan. I'm gonna give a little spiel now, and then I'm gonna go hiking a little bit later. Have a You're, nice day. I only saw your chin, so. <laughs> Perfectly framed. Probably Hi, better off my that name way. is Dan. Don't with me. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before I found myself on the Wind River High Route. I first became acquainted with the winds in 2019 while hiking from Mexico to Canada on the Continental Divide Trail, and I instantly fell in love with the dramatic towers, lush meadows, and pristine alpine lakes that characterized the range. I knew as I was passing through on the CDT that I wanted to come back and see more of what these mountains had to offer. And I knew that the way to do that would be on a high route. High routes allow you to get to know a mountain range more intimately. By traveling cross country, you experience the terrain firsthand rather than from the comfort of a trail. That means scrambling on steep rock, hopping over loose talus, and navigating all kinds of natural obstacles. Our route would begin in the Green River Valley whose namesake river flows down from the mountains and glistens a beautiful teal while Square Top Mountain looms large in the distance. We had about a week to hike 80 challenging miles through the heart of the winds from the northern to the southern reaches of the range, what was sure to be a great adventure. So what's everybody having? Fettuccine Alfredo. Looks like potatoes. Yeah. Okay. Potato With a little bit Alfredo. of uh, four cheese potatoes to uh, absorb the water. Bites is having nothing. You know what's funny? Like Matt is having like Cheerios. Oh, Cheerios. Oh, ramen! <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then the following year, I got smart. Milk. And I was like, what, they're like what are you eating? I'm like, oh, let's go. And we've it. got exactly the gourmet <laughs> option. <laughs> Backpacker's <laughs> Pantry <laughs> Pad Thai. Gourmet. Ultra heavy edition. Dude, it's lighter than ramen. You didn't repackage it. Huh? You didn't repackage it. No, it's li it's literally lighter than ramen. I'm gonna zoom in on the net weight. Dude, we don't do net weight net in the Mullen eight, household. We 8. do. Eight point one ounces. But two servings. Did someone say ten thousand feet? I did. It has been a pretty successful first day so far. We went a couple miles further than anticipated. Uh, so right now we're going up. Cube Rock Pass, which is our first pass of the Wind River High Route. Uh, we're going to camp around Peak Lake, and that will set us up very nicely to go over Knapsack Call tomorrow. First day, pretty good one. As we made our way toward Knapsack Call, the intense mid-morning sun washed over the landscape, thawing us out after a chilly first night. Knapsack would be our first off-trail pass on the route, and a good way to ease into more difficult terrain. One side of the pass had potential to be tricky. If it was snowbound, we would have to skirt the edge of the steep snow on unstable talus. But since it was later in the season, we were optimistic for easier conditions. As we made our way closer to the pass, the views just got better and better. On the way up to Knapsack Call, first off-trail pass of the Wind River High Route. This side should be pretty easy going. A little bit of talus hopping and scrambling on the other side. Right, but there's also 
How's everybody rate our first big pass? In terms of? Two. Out of? Two. Out of? Two out of? Two out of two. Two out of two. Guys, the scale is zero, one, or two. All right, here we are at the end of day two on the Wind River High Route. Pretty successful second day. We're camped just where we had planned in uh, Indian Basin. Tomorrow will be the, what is likely to be the most intense day of our route. Uh, we are going up and over Indian Pass and then crossing the Knife Point Glacier. And we will be going over in the morning, so there's a chance it might be a little bit hard, uh, but we did make a group decision to bring spikes. So shouldn't be a problem, even if it is a little bit icy. Uh, then we have to go through the Alpine Lakes Basin. And that basin is supposed to be very tedious and slow, like a lot of talus hopping and stuff. So tomorrow should be a pretty uh, grueling and tedious, uh, you know, just tiring day. Decided to cowboy camp last night, and man, this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever cowboy camped. Check out the view that I get to wake up to. I think that everyone who can should go somewhere where you can see the stars at night and just sleep out under the stars with no tent or tarp or anything. Because it's just, there's nothing like it. Every time I do it, there's always a sense of wonder. Armstrong, how are we feeling about this glacier? What glacier? Oh, that's right. So the Knife Point Glacier should be in front of us. Uh, it's virtually non-existent, at least for our purposes, which is going to make for even probably slower going. Now we're all really, really happy that we carried micro spikes, right guys? It's the best. Yeah. You never know. You never know when you have to throw them at a bear. Never know when you have to throw them at I got real mad. <laughs> so it turns out there actually is some glacier, thankfully. That is the Knife Point Glacier right there. Now it'll just be a question of the, finding the best route down to where it is flatter there. Right over there you can see our next pass, which is Alpine Lakes Pass. I think it's going to be slow going getting over there. Crossing Knife Point Glacier turned out to be a lot of fun and not stressful at all, but we were still glad to have our spikes. As we got closer to the top of Alpine Lakes Pass, the view behind us opened up to display the massive scale of the glacier we had just crossed. The pass itself was slow going and loose, but it wasn't until we got down into the basin that things got spicy. Woo! 
After hours of talus hopping and scrambling around cliffs, the challenging terrain started to take its toll. But our fatigue was easily outweighed by the beauty of the basin. One heavy GoPro. Oh, very heavy GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Careful. Oh All right. So day four, starting day four on the Wind River High Route. Um, today we are met with some pretty smoky conditions, unfortunately. Hoping that today is a little bit easier. There's some trail and use trail today, so things should go a little bit more smoothly. So this lake we are traversing along is called Long Lake. Today is a good day. Today is turning out to be like the perfect recovery day after kind of getting our butts kicked by all the talus hopping yesterday. Yeah, good amount of used trail today, old trail, and just like smooth, mellow cross country. And I think that's just what we needed today. There's been a lot of really big, beautiful lakes today. So that's been pretty nice uh, being treated to these majestic lakes, you know, since the views off in the distance haven't been that great thanks to the smoke. It's been nice to have these lakes up close to enjoy as we stroll along through the winds. Day five on the Wind River High Route. The smoke has been replaced with some cloud cover. Honestly though, that's uh, not a bad trade. The navigation is still pretty easy, like it's very line of sight. Like we see the lake we're going to in the distance, but we just have to pick our way through a lot of like small stuff that's in the way, trees, rocks, little drop offs, that kind of thing. We got some cool stuff today. We're gonna go over Bonneville Pass later, which is between uh, Mount Bonneville and Raid Peak. It was during the approach to Mount Bonneville and Raid Peak that I encountered my favorite mountain of the trip. A mountain so pointy and so massive that I was unable to capture it in one frame. That mountain was Pronghorn Peak, whose sheer southeast face towers over 1,200 feet above Lake Donna and plunges directly down to its shore. Soon, we reached Bonneville Basin, our last resting point before Raid Peak Pass, where we stopped to discuss our options as the clouds overhead threatened us with a storm. So we are taking a little detour off the Dixon route to try some of the Skirker route. So we were down in Bonneville Basin and kind of looks like there might be a storm brewing, so we want to get over our next pass as quick as possible and this route over this sort of little mini pass here is going to be the fastest way to do that rather than go down into that valley and loop all the way around like the Dixon route does. This is uh, about to be a class 3 ascent that we're doing so adding a little bit of spice into the mix. Um, couple that with the thunderstorm risk and we uh, are making things a little bit more interesting this afternoon. Nice. We 
mean, I think Matt's just doing that move because he can. I mean, you should have seen his entrance move. <laughs> The climb to Raid Peak Pass was a fun challenge. There were multiple viable routes to the top. Armstrong, Bites, and I chose to stay on the talus, while Radio and Matt took a smooth but exposed route on slab. On the PCT, Vinny would always go ahead of me, and then after a while, he would just be waiting at the curve, just doing some funny dance. That didn't really go. Please edit that out. Nope. <laughs> Good job, team. Should we get a pic together? Sure. Okay. We have no photos together. Why am I yawning in this stressful situation? It doesn't make any sense. It's over. I was yawning down there, too. Because it's cloudy. I guess. It's a sleepy day. Class three scrambling. Tucker's him out. I guess I'll stop yawning if it's class four. Right. That is some big hail. How you like it? It's fun when it hits your bare fingertips that are already cold. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> this is not exactly my idea of fun. Like marble-sized hail falling. Wow, glad we got over that pass when we did. This is a nutty storm. Woo! I don't understand what his problem is. This is a duo mid in Ron we trust. We are both happy and mad at Ron at the same time, but most <laughs> mostly happy. I'm well, filled with an attitude of gratitude this if, trip. If only one in five people can be rained on, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a Turkish bathhouse in here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you can go outside if you want. <laughs> Do you like have a seal? Let's do that again sometime. Honestly, the timing could not have been better. <laughs> Realistically. Hello. Hi. Uh. On the morning of day six, I was as happy as I'd ever been to see the sun. As we dried out and recovered from a cold, wet night, we made our way toward the Cirque of the Towers, the final highlight of our route. Unfortunately, the sky was soon threatening again and we had to wait for breaks between mini hailstorms to get over Texas Pass and into the Cirque. We only had a short while to enjoy the view before it started raining and had to abandon our plans to climb one of the mountains near the pass. But hey, you can't win them all. Rain in again, water started cooling so I had to move my tarp. So that was really fun. Uh, I guess it's time for a nap. Just, uh, now there's good charcoal on the uh, embers of the bottom. What a good last night on trail. What a way to turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Spicy. Stay back. <laughs> yeah. Nobody get lit on fire. At least I'd be warm. <laughs> Guys, I survived going to the lake without bear spray. Amazing. I heard bears are attracted to campfires. 
Really? No. The only thing more satisfying than warming up by a fire after nasty weather is actually succeeding in making that fire. It was a huge morale boost, and given the circumstances, we really couldn't have asked for a better last night. Last morning of the trip, we have a gear explosion. Drying all our stuff because it rained all night. Well, here I am at the Cirque of the Towers, the last big hurrah of the Dixon Wind River High Route. Turned out to be a pretty eventful trip. Wasn't expecting so much crazy weather, but yeah, it was a great trip overall. It was so nice to be able to see uh, so many of my hiking friends on one trip. I guess as far as thoughts on the route itself, I would say overall it was a little bit gentler than I expected. However, I will say it is a very elegant route um, and sort of very clever in how it's put together. If you go north to south, you get a day or two of very gentle terrain to warm up and then you get knapsack call, which um, is sort of gonna ease you into cross-country travel. And then you have the Alpine Lakes Basin, which is the really intense stuff. And then after that, you get a break from talus hopping and all of the craziness, and you get some very mellow, uh, very enjoyable cross-country walking. You have a little bit more excitement toward the end with uh, Raid Peak Pass uh, between Raid Peak and Mount Bonneville. And then you wrap up with the Cirque of the Towers. Super enjoyable route. Um, not much else to say about it. Really glad that I did it. Uh, now going to have a uh, pretty smooth nine or so miles out to the trailhead. It's always bittersweet leaving the mountains. As I stared up at the incredible granite towers of the Cirque, I couldn't help but feel sad that I'd soon be back in the real world, whatever that means. But I also felt a deep sense of gratitude for the past six days, for the winds, and for the wonderful friends with whom I shared the route. Until next time.